Our viewership has a very strong interest in Edward Snowden. We interviewed him in 2017. Therefore, I want to ask you, how is he doing and what is his status in Russia? He's doing very well, given the fact that he is a person who is confined to a country that he didn't choose to live in for now eight years and cannot leave that country without facing the immediate and certain threat of being arrested by the world's most powerful government and put in a cage for the rest of his life. So given that uh, highly repressive restriction under which he's been living since 2013, he's doing well. He is married. He had a baby about a year ago with his longtime girlfriend, now wife. Um, he has done very fulfilling work. He works with the Freedom of the Press Foundation, which is the organization I co-founded along with people like Daniel Ellsberg, the whistleblower who leaked the Pentagon Papers to the to the Washington uh, to the New York Times. Laura Poitras, who worked with me on uh, the Snowden reporting, was while she was based in Germany, um, and several other transparency advocates. He's the president of that organization. He's wrote a book last year. He does speeches. He participates. So he's doing very well from the perspective that he has his liberty in Russia, and he has his liberty to speak out. And he often does on privacy and surveillance. He criticizes the Russian government. He criticizes the United States government. So all things considered, he's he's doing quite well. And needless to say, views the choice that he made, not with regret, but with great pride, as he should, because he knows that it 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 contributed a great deal to the world in letting us know the threats that come from state surveillance. To my last question, you left The Intercept last year and now publishing your work on other platforms. Could you tell our viewers where they can follow your work and why you chose these platforms? Sure. So uh, I did leave The Intercept in uh, October of, of 2020 because in the weeks leading up to the election, they tried to prevent me from publishing an article which I wanted to publish about evidence suggesting or raising ethical questions about Joe Biden. And I went to Substack, which is a platform designed to protect writers like myself who do have anti-establishment views that don't fit comfortably into corporate media and mainstream media to be able to reach large audiences without being censored. And I've been writing there for the last year. I also now uh, do video content and create video reports on a platform called Rumble which is a competitor of YouTube, but designed to ensure freedom of speech, to not deplatform people, like your videos have been deplatformed because they cross some invisible line or another set by Google. And I'm also as, as well doing podcasts and interviews on a new podcast op app called Get Colin or Colin, C-A-L-L-I-N, which has a similar ethos that it's designed to ensure freedom of speech. So I think what you're seeing is the emergence of this media ecosystem and this part of the internet that is about independent journalism that is designed to shield people from the rep increasing repression of big tech and the power of the state to censor. And for me, that has become one of the most important causes for my journalism, which is I'm trying to make sure to do my journalism and bring my audience to platforms that are protecting these values. Glenn Greenwald, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, thank you so much for your time. It was great to be with you. Thanks for having me. And thank you guys for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the bell below and to visit our alternative channels in Rumble and Telegram. It's also mentioned in the description. Last but not the least, don't forget to donate so we can continue to produce independent and non-profit news and analysis. I'm your host, San Raza. See you guys next time. These are the building blocks that make up our organization and the goals we would like to achieve. In order to continue our journalism until 2022 and realize these values fundamental to our democracy, we need 1,000 supporters in our crowdfunding campaign, donating only 5 euros or dollars per month via Patreon or bank account. Right now, we have only 200 supporters and are not able to take the next step. Our future is in your hands. Strengthen independent journalism and be part of meaningful change. <laughs>